the first university that we will be talking about today, and we will we have our representatives with us, is Commonwealth University, known as UCOM. Uh, the university is uh, registered with the WGMS, of course, recognized by GMC, CFMG, AMC, MCC, located in um, the St. Lucian, one of the foremost modern medical schools in the Northern Hemisphere. The university is considered globally preferred um, learning destination with a mission of teaching students through basic sciences, clinicals, research, mentorship, merging clinicals um, um, with the equipment, with graduates, improve it, adaptive and critical skills. Their professional faculty is highly regarded for their parallel teaching mythologies and integrates basic sciences, early exposure to clinical rotations and practices, provisions of community and universal healthcare preparing students for the 21st century medical practice. Uh, very organized and as you can see, and I'm sure that uh, we have one of our, we have a student also with us, we have the Dean with us, um, who will be of course sharing all of these details. And the tuition fees uh, for each year are approximately 5,500 pounds. Um, and that is um, a number of installment for one. Sorry, I, I said this wrong. Up, I apologize. Five thousand. I'm sorry. Five thousand. We're very tired. Very tired. <laughs> Five thousand five hundred pounds. If you'd like to pay everything in one installment in the beginning of the year, but if they do give you the choice, if you'd like to pay it in two installments, and that would be at six thousand uh, pounds per year paid in two installments. And of course, the speakers that are with us today is uh, the Dean of uh, the post -Med uh, MD and IMG program, Dr. Subha Rao. Uh, extensive, she has extensive experience of more than 15 years in medical education, ECFMG certified and medical quality assurance specialist, completed fellowships at Harvard Medical School and conducted research at Henry Ford Health System. USC and UCLA. She has an MD from Loma Linden University of Medicine in the US. And of course, we will also have one uh, a student with us, Ms. Raj, who is a current student and she's in third year. And actually, I'm glad we'll be talking with her because she's going to tell us a lot about the clinicals now because she's in she's clinicals. There. So we're very happy to have um with us uh can is dr uh Pooja with us hello yes, hello. yes i'm here oh, yes hi. how are you hey, how are you, how good, are you? Evening. good evening to both of you ladies and good evening to all of the students thank you thank, thank you. you so much for being with us thank you um i we We've had, this is a, a new collaboration with us, uh, of course, and we have uh, so many students that have applied for this year for 2023 entry, September oh, entry, uh, waiting to come and start the program or start their program online. So we just want Dr. Pooja just to tell us a little bit about the university uh, and share with us a little bit information that I think is going to help prospective students in applying and of course the ones that have applied and are ready to start their program now uh what to expect okay okay yes i'm willing to do so um can i i have a pr pdf presentation um yes. can i share my screen yes of yes, course you can okay. okay so welcome to each and every one of you i'm so delighted to be here it's going to be an exciting and it's going to be a very delightful and in, invigorating course. Um, this is actually a very fast track, fast pace, accelerated program, okay, in which instead of the traditional four years that a usually a medical school provides, this is going to be a in a three year realm, okay? All right. So, um, so basically, it's it's without the vacations, you understand the traditional vacations that are usually um, part of the curriculum of a traditional medical uh, school setting. All right. So this fast paced accelerated has a lot of strengths. OK, it has the renowned board of governors from all over the world 
Okay. So I think that is very, very important because we get perspectives from different cultures, different practices, and different um, mindsets. And I think that's very important given the trajectory, given the um, the way the society is, the way the, um, you know, how um, global the world is. You understand what I'm saying? Like, for example, we have taken COVID, right? It's not only transcended certain continents, it's transcended the entire world, right? So I think that knowledge, that expertise, it's going to be it's going to be very, very useful, and it's going to be very, very um, important moving forward in the education and also in the delivery of medical education. Okay. Okay. So global licensing, MD program that promotes one program, one license, access to multiple country licensing processes. So with this degree, an individual, a student can practice in multiple countries. So that is a very, very big advantage, okay? Global physicians, truly making global physicians, making doctors with technology to handle real world healthcare problems. Because the faculty, because the physicians that teach are coming from all over the world, that enhances the, um, what do you call, that enhances the repertoire that enhances the curriculum and that enhances the syllabus. And we will be getting the knowledge. You will be getting the knowledge, not only from one um, country, but from multiple countries. So I think that's going to be very, very useful, regardless of where you practice. You understand what I'm saying? Qualified faculty, highly qualified faculty and access to a student counselor. Yes. So the faculty come from all walks of the world. They come from India, they come from America, they come from all over the world. So, and UK, of course, everywhere all over the world. So I think, and these, these uh, faculty have come from world-renowned universities, such as, um, you know, Harvard Medical School, um, you know, um, uh, UC San Francisco, et cetera, UCLA, um, so many of these types of universities that have uh, been in the cutting edge of technology and the cutting edge of research in the medical profession. Okay, career development, many program that focused on career and skill development. Yes. See, the thing is, as you go through this accelerated program, okay, students, um, you will acquire, you will attain skills that are going to be useful for you um, both in the research realm and also in the practice realm. And I think, see, the thing is, it's not only the book knowledge that you're going to be gaining, you're going to be attaining practical knowledge with all the cl clinical case scenarios. And we're going to, inter especially me, I'm going to integrate a lot of the clinical case scenarios with the basic sciences. So you will get a um, more holistic, more thorough representation of the concepts. And I think that's very, very important um, yes. as a transition, as a sublime towards your clinical sciences. All right. Now, tech integrated, MD curriculum that introduces AI, blockchain, robotics into modern technology tools in practice. Okay. As you know, the healthcare industry has been changing leaps and bounds from the technology aspect to the um, delivery aspect. It's been changing. So we as a, um, what do you call, educational entity, as an educational institute, will integrate those practices such as machine learning, um, artificial intelligence. I'm sure all of you have heard of like those smart watches that people wear um, to what do you call monitor one's, um, what do you call healthcare, monitor, monitor one's health. In, in the real time setting, right? So we're going to integrate that. We're going to use that. We're going to incorporate that into the curriculum, into the syllabus. So you will be ready as not only um, knowledgeable medical doctors, but technologically advanced medical doctors. All right. Okay, next. So these are some additional strengths. We have an integrated organ-based curriculum. Now, what that means is the following. It's going to be more system-based. OK, for example, we're going to be covering the cardiovascular system. We're going to be covering the anatomy. We're going to be covering the embryology. 
We're going to be covering the anatomy. We're going to be covering the physiology. Okay. We're going to be covering the pathology, so on and so forth, the pharmacology, so on and so forth. Okay. So you get a more thorough road. Like it's kind of like you're driving on a specific road. So you get everything from that system. Then we're going to move on to a different system. And I think given the way the world has evolved, I think that is a very, very innovative very, very um, technologically, um, what do you call, favorable means of learning the material, okay? Okay, we're going to emphasize, emphasize, emphasize on gaining solid medical knowledge and focusing on what the job market needs, teaching collaborative smart skills and precise care delivery to create future physicians. Given, like, as you know, a lot of the... Um, Healthcare delivery systems are very digital, okay? From EMR to what do you call, from electronic medical records to delivery. Um, so we're going to integrate that and we're going to incorporate that into the teaching curriculum, okay? Modern classrooms and learning spaces. Yes, we're going to, um, the that's um, basically what they're trying to say is the classrooms are going to be very innovative and very digital in um in, in the way the classes are going to be taught. Activity-based learning. I personally believe in a very proactive approach in learning. There are passive teaching and there's active teaching. I feel that as a healthcare professional myself, okay, it's very important to um, actively involve the students in their education in, so then they, they get an optimized, more optimal um learning experience so that's gonna that's gonna be happening next support for student research and community care engagement okay as part of the curriculum you are going to be having to be involved with some type of community activity that is health related that is part of the curriculum in order for you to attain your md degree okay student-led organizations and interest groups okay see the thing is i am a very big proponent of leadership of um, like um, creativity. If a person's leadership, they will be of they will be a advocate. They will be a uh, what do you call a leader for the patient. Okay. So in that realm, I think it's very important to inculcate and cultivate those types of habits at a very young age means right now, okay? So then it's integrated into your curriculum. So you, when you move on to your clinical practice or your research job or what have you, um, you will be more um, aware of how to communicate, how to integrate, and how to even take your knowledge even to the government level in the sense of like health policy changes and um, uh, such activities. All right. Next, emphasis on data-driven, precise digital smart care delivery skills. In the collaborative care environment, teaching ease of using technology for the precise medical practice. Yes. So that has to, a lot to do with technology. You know, I'm sure all of you have heard of like smartwatches, Fitbit. So that is incorporated into our repertoire. Okay. And um, um, is, so you will be able to kind of in real time understand that. You understand what I'm saying? All right, next. Okay, so this is the education, okay? You have two phases. You have a phase one and you have a phase two, okay? So you have four academic years, okay? So each phase is, the phase one is the basic sciences, okay? Phase two is the clinical sciences. So the phase one is divided into MD1, MD2, MD3, MD4, and MD5. And then you have IFOM basic science exit one exam. All right. Then you have the phase two, which is the clinical sciences. And I think you did hear, hear that information prior to me speaking to you. Um, the phase two is the clinical science. So it involves the core rotation, which is family medicine, internal medicine, general surgery, and pediatrics. Okay. Let me kind of dive in a little bit about family medicine. 
family medicine is kind of like a medical medley. Okay, it has a little bit of internal medicine, it has a little bit of it has a little bit of OBG, it has a little bit of pediatrics, it has internal medicine, it has geriatrics, it has psychiatry, it has general surgery, it has a little bit of everything. Okay, core rotation internal medicine, those are with regards to these specific subjects, like, for example, neurology, cardio, uh, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, GI system, um, so on and so forth. Okay. And then general surgery is about the general surgery techniques and the different subjects that are involved uh, within that um, subject, subject discipline. Pedi pediatrics is, has to do with child, child medicine. Okay. So it's going to be dealing with that. And these are the other core rotations. You have OBG, psychiatry, cardiology, neurology, em emergency medicine, nephrology, which I know uh, is the study of the kidney, oncology, which has to do with the study of cancer, Ophthalmo ophthalmology, which has to do with the eye doctor, <laughs> uh, dermatology, which has to do with the skin, and you have clinical science research. Okay. And final IF bomb, clinical science uh, exit two. Now, I want to emphasize one thing. Clinical science research is very, very important, okay? Regardless of where you're going to uh, practice, okay? What drives medicine is creativity. What drives medicine is, is curiosity, okay? And the textbooks that you are going to study, the information that you're going to attain is governed from research, is, is provided from research. So, I want you also to be in the future. I mean, if that is your um, future um, goal, I want you also to integrate and incorporate and inculcate clinical science research into your um, medical career. So maybe you will like, you know, write a book and that will be published and that will be taught to thousands of students in the future. So that's why clinical research is very important. The advances that we have made in the medical profession is because of the clinical science research, okay? Regardless, whether it's cardiovascular research, whether it's oncology research, cancer research, infectious disease research, even COVID, it's because of clinical science research. So it's a very, very important and very, very in integrative um, um, subject, discipline within the medical sciences, all right? So phase one has these, okay, so you have MD1, which is week one, um, you know, uh, one to 16, MD2, which is week 17 to 32, then you have uh, three is week 33 to 48, and then academic year four, week 49 to 64, and then week five, I mean, um, five is week 65 to 80, okay? So the fundamental concepts will be taught for 10 weeks, musculoskeletal system will be taught for six weeks, respiratory system will be taught for eight weeks, GI system will be taught for eight weeks, nervous system will be taught for 11 weeks, um, cardiovascular system um, part one is for five weeks, cardiovascular system two is for six weeks, and then you have the hematologic, um, hemopoietic system, which includes oncology, which includes blood, Okay. And that's for five weeks. And then you have the renal and metabolic system, which is for five weeks. And then you have the endocrine and reproductive system. Okay. Which is for eight weeks. And then you have the comprehensive clinical skills, which is for eight weeks. All right. Okay. So it's very structured, very, very structured. Okay. Now this is phase two, which is what the phase two is the clinical sciences, right? So it's family medicine, as I just discussed in detail, uh, it's kind of like a medical medley. It includes a little bit of everything. Okay. Um, that's for six weeks. Then you have internal medicine is for 12 weeks. General surgery is for eight weeks. Pediatrics is for six weeks. OBG is for six weeks and psychiatry is for six weeks. Okay. Now the clinical rotations are performed at hospitals in the United States and also in St. Lucia. Okay. So the clinical program in the United States is conducted at the ACGME affiliated teaching hospitals through our clinical administration office in Maryland, near, which is near Washington, D.C. All right. OK, so these are the clinical sciences, the clinical sciences. So these are the um, subjects. OK, and they're going to be taught in Chicago, Texas, Atlanta, Virginia, uh, Maryland and Washington, D.C. And of course, St. Lucia. All right. So they include cardiology, neurology, uh, emergency medicine, nephrology, oncology, ophthalmology, uh, dermatology and clinical science research. All right. Now, there is an allocated number of hours that need to be taught, 
Okay, so it's a total of 156 weeks and 5,596 5, clock hours. All right, so these are the basic science subjects. Okay, so within, like, remember I gave you that example of the cardiovascular system, that you have the embryology, which is with regards to the development, with regards to the formation, then we go to the you know, the gross anatomy, so on and so forth. So this is the number of hours that is allocated for each subject discipline, okay? So with regards to gross anatomy and embryology, it's about two, it's 210 hours. Biochemistry and genetics, it's 150 hours. Cell biology and histology, it's 105 hours, okay? So these are the subjects, community outreach activity, medical physiology. Physiology is basically the study of normal functioning. M epidemiology and preventive med uh, medicine is a very, very underrated, but extremely important subject. M epidemiology has to do with biostatistics and um, like, you know, trends, statistical trends in disease processes. Okay. And preventive medicine has to do with um, primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention, tertiary prevention in prevention of the disease process itself and also the manifestation, the consequences of a disease process once it has already developed. All right. Behavioral science has a lot to do with um, the basic sciences of psychiatry. Okay. Medical and legal ethics. This is very, very important. The medical profession is a very noble and a very ethical profession. So it's very important to abide by certain uh, laws and like ethical values, regardless of what kind of clinical, what kind of healthcare professional you're going to be, whether it's a research, whether it's a clinical, um, a, a, what do you call, um, practicing medicine, or whether you go into a teaching. Okay, so regardless, ethics medical, legal are very important. And that should be abided and inculcated into your being as a healthcare professional, regardless whether you're going to practice medicine, whether you're going to go into a research realm, or whether you're going to go into the teaching realm. Okay. Next, patient-doctor relationship and history taking. This is very, very important. Okay. Um, especially from, especially, especially, it's also important in research, also important in teaching, but also extremely imperative when you are communicating with patients, because you know what, especially for certain, like um, there are going to be chronic conditions in which you need to attain, maintain a relationship with your um, doctor. It's very, very important. So in order to maintain a relationship with your physician, okay, it's, it's uh, important that both communicate in a very sound, in a very proper, in a very friendly in a very um, um, uh, properly communicative manner. So that's where this is very important, okay? Then you have skills lab activity. That is very important with regards to like pathology and all that, okay? And, you know, uh, and looking things under the mic microscope and everything like that. Microbiology has to do with like, you know, disease, pro like diseases and everything, like, like infectious infections and stuff like that, bacteria, viral, and, you know, fungal, et cetera, immunology, Immunology is very, very important. And moreover, it's extremely, extremely imperative now that immunology has taken a very, very important role in cancer management. Okay, next, neuroscience. That has a lot to do with neuroanatomy. Okay, pathology one has to do with general pathology. Okay, general pathology is when an injury happens, what, what happens to the body? Okay. Pharmacology has to do, has to do with different medications that are prescribed for various conditions. Okay. Pathology too has to do with system-based, system-based disease processes. Okay. So um, physical diagnosis has to do with like, you know, like, you know, actual physical um, findings, murmurs, um, rails, crackles, that are um, elicited from the physician, okay? Introduction to clinical medicine, yes. And then you have community outreach activity in which that is part of your curriculum. You will have to do some type of uh, community outreach um, 
um, activity. Next, board review series. That is that is preparation for the board exam. Okay. All right. Next. Uh, one second. Give me a quick second. Okay. So these are the clinical science subject. You have the internal medicine. We are already did general surgery, pediatrics, psychiatry, family medicine, obstetrics and gynecology, dermatology, em emergency medicine, community medicine, infectious disease, ophthalmology, anesthesiology, and oncology. So elective rotations are student-led activities. You have the option to select and decide in, on specialty courses, each lasting four weeks, depending on the clinical destination. The core rotations are mandatory subjects required to be completed within the recommended duration at the affiliated hospitals in the assigned clinical de uh, destinations. All right. Okay, next. So, in a nutshell, so uh, upon co successful completion of fast track, BSMD program, CUCOM graduates will hold a primary medical qualification meeting the GMC's criteria for an acceptable overseas qualification. This renders CUCOM graduates eligible to apply for GMC registration in the UK and to sit for the PLAB test. All right. So preclinical, there's going to be 240 hours. For clinical, it's going to be 280 hours. So research subtotal is 520. So the subtotal you have the preclinical clock hours is 2,556 hours. Clinical clock hours are 2520. And research clock hours are 5, 520. And total is 5,596 hours. All right? OK. So it's really been a great pleasure, an honor, and a privilege to speak amongst all of you today. First and foremost, I'm really proud of each and every one of you for choosing the medical profession as your career choice, as your vocation of interest. But you know why? Because it is one of the most noble professions out there, okay? And you're not only helping yourself, you're helping your family and you're helping the society and you're saving lives at the end of the day. So hats off to each and every one of you, okay? For choosing the medical profession as your career choice, okay? Um, I wish you the very best, and I look forward to interacting with each and every one, every one of you in the near future. Okay? See you soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you much. so much for that presentation. It was amazing. Thank you. Um, I think it, you gave every detail possible for each and every one of these students to just decide that this is the university they want to apply to. You gave them the aspects of the whole program, preclinical, basic sciences, clinical. It was amazing. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for that. And, and the last that you uh, mentioned about um, why these students want to be doctors, this is what we always say, that uh, someone who wants to be a doctor um, cannot imagine himself doing anything else except this. So we believe that each and every student that comes to us wanting to study medicine is someone who knows why they're getting into this. Yes. Because obviously you're a doctor, you know, it's not, it's not easy, but it's worth it, I think, in the end. Definitely, definitely. And I just want to um, um, indicate one, uh, one issue, okay? CUCOM is a very innovative, technologically advanced university of medicine, okay, in which it adapts to the current uh, trends and practices in medicine, okay, in real time. And it has a very family oriented atmosphere. And we will also help from the psychological perspective, because I know the stress and anxiety that is associated with Better medicine is 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 you know is tremendous. You understand yes. what I'm saying because of the technical nature of the subjects. So we will definitely provide like counseling and everything of that nature to kind of um, make the student more comfortable in right. in the medical education setting. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for that. I'm really happy because today we did. The first time uh, this presentation and it was uh, amazing thank you thank, thank you. you so much um we're it's going to also talk with one of the students of course who's studying um and her name is bizrat is she with us how are you doing hi hi very well thank you how are you 
Okay, I am a third year medical school in Commonwealth University. Okay. Um, I believe that you are in your clinical years now, right? And you're doing your rotations in the US? Doing my, uh, my rotation in US. Uh, I'm a third year medical student. Mm -hmm. But the can clinical you, year. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, you're breaking off, uh, so I don't know if you're uh, if you're listening and you can hear my question. Yeah, I hear you now. Okay, um, so I, I I know that you're a third year medical student. You're doing your clinical rotations in the U.S. Um, I believe you're doing surgery now, right? Yes, I am currently doing surgery. Okay, could could you just roughly, I mean, very quickly, just tell us just two, three things about your experience of doing your clinical rotations now, being in third year, and um, just a little bit of information on that. Um, okay, so I started my um, I started my rotation surgery uh, in June. Uh, I chose uh, I chose to stay in Maryland because my family is nearby. Okay. And it has been a great experience. Uh, my mentor was a very great, I have to, I got to learn a lot from him. It was a, such a great experience as I, I experienced some amazing procedures and it was a very great experience. And you also did, I think, um, infectious diseases. You just finished that rotation before you went into uh, the surgery, right? Yes, when I started, it was I started on uh, elective. It was infectious yeah, disease. I did back. that for four weeks. That was also a very great experience for me. I got to learn a lot from my preceptors. Mm -hmm. It was a great experience too. So, in general, you would say that uh, the the knowledge that you're getting with the clinicals and you're able to do these clinicals in the U.S. with the university's guidance, of course, um, it is up to the standards that you were expecting. Yes, uh, it is the standard that I would expect. Expecting uh, there are a great great hospitals here, great preceptors, and I got to learn more from them. You know, as you know, medical school is all about experience, interacting with patients. At the end of the day, just being a good doctor uh, is the, the main goal. So I got to experience with a great doctors. And I'll say I have a great experience both on my core and elective rotations. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you um, so much, Rizrat. We um, hope that we will be having you again in our next uh, open days. Um, okay. We'd like to thank uh, both of you, of course, that uh, sharing this experience. And Dr. Bruja, um, thank you so much once again. It was very important for, for everyone to hear this presentation so everyone knows exactly what the three-year medical program really consists. What is this three-year program that someone might think is too fast track, even though it's uh, formed and organized in a way where everything has to be done in order for someone to become a doctor. So um, thank you so much on that.